uh, low gamers. So yesterday I beat Sifu on Master Difficulty. And it wasn't just a normal Master Difficulty run, I just beat the game at age 20. I didn't use any skills, like from the skill tree, like no focus moves either. And I didn't use a shrine once. Shrines usually let you recover health and make your parries and everything more impactful. So I just want to talk about how I did it and what's the difference between the master difficulty and the normal difficulty so maybe you guys can, you know, learn a bit from this video. So the normal goons haven't been changed much. They are more aggressive. That's pretty much the biggest difference. So if you are in a room of like 10 people, none of them are going to just be watching. Most of them will be trying to get a hit in you. Which makes the normal game a bit more difficult, but also much more fun, in my opinion. So as you can see, I'm just powering through these goons. I'm not picking up any weapons, not using any shrines. And I'm just using basic combos that the game provides. We are using shortcuts in this run. I just wanted to learn the game like all over again, the bosses mainly, before I do the ultimate challenge as a 75 year old with no shortcuts, which I'll be streaming next week. So yeah, we get into the squats warehouse, the little bug there, and we take out the goons one by one. You can sneak attack a few of them to make this level much easier. Got stuck there. I could have taken out two more with sneak attacks, but for some reason I just didn't. And I wanted to fight all of them at once. So, as you can see here, I'm using a stairs tactic, which is basically just pushing people up the stairs one by one. Now, this isn't the first time I. This is the only time I beat squats without dying, but this is the first time I did it, and this is the techniques I used. As you can see there, there's quite a few goons, all of them are trying to attack me. And here we do get a bit cornered by them, but luckily enough, this is a no death run, so don't worry guys. You won't have to see me fail. Now the biggest problem about using uh, no shrines is that you can't recover health. The only way to recover health is by killing enemies. So we go into this room, take out the fat guy, makes the room so much easier. And if you keep an eye on and if you keep an eye on my health, you can see that it's not gonna fully recover before I go into the boss room. I'm missing like just a little bit of HP, which you know can be game changing sometimes. So yeah, we're just gonna run here, run past the shrine. Man, really was tempted to use that, but it's whatever. I think I was reading chat this time, so I wasn't sprinting the whole time I was going to Fajar. I was streaming the whole run, so if you guys, you know, don't believe that I did this for some reason without skills or anything, you can just check my live streams. They're all up on my channel. Now we get to Fajar room. We skip the cutscene. I've seen it literally a hundred times. And we get down to beating him. So Fajar, when he enters combat, he does two normal attacks that you can just duck from. And then he either does a side kick, like a body kick, or a low sweep. Now the low sweep, you can actually parry, it's not that bad, if you parry you only lose a bit of structure, but if he does the mid kick to you, you're pretty much fucked. So after you dodge two attacks, you need to make sure that you're ready for a sweep or the mid kick. And if you do dodge the sweep, it's gonna do a few more attacks, one of which is a grab, and if he grabs you, gonna lose a lot of health. Mm. 
After he does the mid kick, he's always open for attacks, so remember to attack him. The best combo to use, like if you're not using any skills, is two heavies and then like either a push and a sweep after the push. It's like a chasing trip kick, but I have to actually manually chase him and trip kick him. As you can see there, we are nearly dead, but we still got the jar. And now to phase two. Phase two is a bit more trickier in my opinion, but I think this is a good run for me. Let's see how we do. So yeah, he does a lot of the same attacks that he used to do in the normal difficulty. But his main combo is that jump attack that you just saw there. He does two attacks with a sword, which he can parry or dodge. And then he goes either into a high, high kick or a mid kick or a low sweep. And the low sweep is very dangerous because you're most likely gonna duck. Because if he's gonna do a high kick or a mid kick, you know, it's a 33% chance for each of them. Mid kick is the most dangerous though, since if he does hit you with that, he can spawn a tree right behind you, which does even more damage, and then he does another combo, which obliterates your health. And if you do dodge the low sweep, he always backs away, so. Don't try chase him, just be careful and get ready for his next attack. After the mid kick, always attack, he doesn't do any attacks after that, so... I mean, unless he hits you. And if he does the super fast sword move that you just saw there, then just... Touch them. Don't try blocking or parrying them like me. I have spent and yeah, this is not a wood run. I just wanted to, you know, learn the mechanics of the bosses and just beat them without deaths. Wood run is coming soon. Now we're on to the club. If you're not on the list, you're not private. Back off! No. Now some goons in the club actually got a little buff. Like this bodyguard here. He does a low sweep startup from out of nowhere sometimes, so you just need to be careful. Yeah. What do you want? And yeah, just run past everyone. We're not grabbing the bat because we're not using any weapons. And taking down people one by one. If you are facing multiple people, the sweep attack is one of the best attacks to use honestly because while they're on the ground you can attack someone else of course. That double slap though. Easily take out two enemies. Also I like to use the push attack. It's very useful but it can actually be problematic. For example if you're trying to push someone and someone attacks at the same time, there's no way for you to dodge that move because you're stuck in the animation. If you're in this club area and you do struggle with it, try pushing people up the stairs or the stage. They'll take a lot of structure damage and just health damage as well. As you can see, we took all of them out. Oh yeah, this guy turns into a mini boss. And I'm just positioning myself to get a better camera angle. And I got swooped down. And for revenge, I sweep him down. Now, see these mini bosses that turn from normal goons? You can actually just manipulate their position quite a lot. So, you can keep pushing them, you can keep sweeping them. If you push them into a wall, they're gonna take more structure damage and it's gonna make it so much easier to get rid of them.
Now, Flash Kit. I don't think Flash Kit got any changes, to be honest. I mean, you do have a lower structure bar, so now if she does land some hits on you, you're... You're gonna have a bad day. Just take her out, not use the shrine, and go through the shortcut. Now, this room is optional, of course, but since I'm a badass, I took out everyone here. Above this door, the three trials. This is probably the best guy to attack first because um, he's the strongest one in the room. The second strongest character is the blonde girl that has a flash kick moveset. So, take out, take her out second if you can, to be honest. I didn't do that here, but. I focused her after and we still got her. Also, the guns with the weapons are dangerous because they do have a low sweep attack that can come out of nowhere. Just taking them out one by one. And on to the next room. Now, this room I don't really struggle with any time, honestly. I know some of you guys might. There is a technique where you can just run up the wall and start pushing people. But I just like to go all in. Fight them one by one. If you are using weapons, this level is so much easier. But these guys usually come like one or two at you max if you kill them quite quick this level is quite easy so as you can see that guy didn't want to attack me he went to pick up the weapon and that was probably the biggest mistake of his life sweep there but he was too far away I'm getting attacked by two people so spam dodge and there we go now this disciple is actually optional but you know what I had to fight her as well So there is a technique if you actually throw a brick or use a focus to stun her, you can actually just throw her off. And that saves a lot of time and potential damage that you might take. Or you can push her off the stairs. If you do fight a normal. With disciples, when you're fighting them, it's all about the timings. If they do like a flying kick attack, then just dodge, but other than that, you need to just time your parries and you'll eventually stun them. Now on to the Staff Lady. Now, Staff Disciples are honestly my least favorite enemy in this game. Uh, they have some crazy moves. I think they might have been buffed in the massive difficulty, I'm not too sure. Okay, I didn't do the technique I usually do against her, but if you do come up to her, you can just either throw a weapon at her face or just run up to her and sweep her, and then she'll lose her stuff straight away. Now, all about timings when she doesn't have a stuff. Manipulate her movements. Now let her hit me and take her out. Oh, I got stuck there. Now, 
Now, the next area can be a bit tricky for some people, but I like to use this one technique. If you have a staff weapon, it's much easier because the technique I'm going to use is basically pushing one of them from the stairs. And if you have a staff, you push them for a longer distance. And it makes it so much easier. As you can see there, I tried to push, but didn't work until I parried them. Tried to push out off as well, but it's whatever. And when you get attacked by two of them at the same time, it can get a bit stressful. As you can see, I'm super low health now. Just running over to get some more space and distance from them. See what I mean? Push them on the stairs, break the structure, and you're left with just one of them. Now, I'm not even full health and I'm going into the boss fight. If you are using shrines, you recover all your health, but we ain't about that life. Now, Sean, he did get changed a little bit. So, for example, he does low attacks in this first stage. And if you know how to beat him before normal difficulty, this actually shouldn't be a problem. His first stage is like his previous second stage, honestly. All you have to do is dodge, maybe attack in between the, his attacks. And what I like to do here is do a few heavy hits, push him, trip him, and then get another three hits on him. Need to watch out for the sweep attacks. So, when he does a sweep attack, he puts his staff over his head, and once you reel, and once you recognize the animation, the attack isn't that hard to actually dodge. As you can see, we enter the fight with like barely any health. Not barely any health, but like half health, and we still haven't really like been touched. Yeah, until then, that low, that sweep attack actually got me. And on to stage two. Now, stage 2 is a bit more trickier, so basically his Musa is nearly the same, but he does have a combo which he attacks super fast. So just need to watch out for that. The main difference is between normal difficulty is that you can't actually attack him in, the, in between every single hit of his. You're almost as good as Yang. If you see my previous gameplay, you can I see that I usually attack in between every single dodge. But now you have to just be more patient and more careful. Yeah, that was the fast attack I was talking about. Take it slowly, get ready for his attacks, and focus on the low sweeps. If he's not doing low sweep, you can actually just dodge down every single other attack. The timings on Sean are pretty easy to be honest, and his range is short, and just overall this is probably the easiest boss in the game. Especially master difficulty, because Fajar is definitely harder than this guy. Yeah, the push into the low sweep. If you have skills, you can just use the chase and trip kick attack. I don't have that, so I have to make my own combos, you know. Yeah, 
super fast attacks. Just need to be patient and little by little get self done. Pretty easy boss to be honest. Now, unlike Sean, Kuroki, I would say, is the second hardest boss in this game. She's definitely harder than Jinfeng, in my opinion. Jinfeng has very obvious combos, unlike Kuroki, because Kuroki is just super fast and super short range, so you don't really have the time to react to her combos. And this is the first phase. The first phase is very similar to the previous difficulty, but she switches mid combo sometimes, and that's that can catch off guard. So yeah, just running into the lift and getting ready for parole. So the first stage is absolutely not fun for me at all. I would say just practice and learn her combos before you actually try doing the snow death. Her combos are quite tricky, not gonna lie. Probably the trickiest combos in the whole game. And if you saw that spinning attack that she just did, basically best thing to do there is to parry every single attack she does until the last one and then you dodge the last one this basically all the parries will increase her structure and if you dodge the last one she's gonna stop attacking and be vulnerable to attacks so you can even hit her more and increase her structure even more but yeah memorize a lot of her combos so this fight it did take me quite a while to do, I think I was stuck enough for like over an hour. Yeah, see what I mean? I did get hit by one of the blades, but I still managed to dodge the last one and I did a bit of damage to him. There we go. Yeah, second phase now. Now, second phase is actually harder than the first phase. She does a lot of low sweeps, which you need to be careful not to get hit by. And another thing to watch out for is her dashes, which I'll get on when she actually does that. So when she runs at you, she does two attacks. Basically, she tries stabbing you and then does a high kick. You can dodge them or parry them, it doesn't really matter. And then after those two attacks, she does like a 33% chance of doing either move. So she either goes for a jumping attack, which is the orange glowing one, a low sweep, or she carries on her combo. It's hard to tell which one she's gonna do, so the best thing for me, honestly, was just ducking away. Like. So the best thing for me was just honestly, was just dashing away and trying to not get hit. Die now. now see these dashes, she sometimes does two dashes instead of one. So she prepares her blade to dash to you, you might be thinking, oh no, now I need to parry or dodge or whatever you like to do. Parry is the best option but it's the most dangerous one in my opinion compared to dodging. And if you mistime it, she's gonna do another dodge and yeah, she'll have a bad time. You'll see what I mean in just a second, I think. But yeah, see two attacks and then she did a low sweep. I back away, she continues her combo. And if she does that jump attack, you can attack her after. You can land, I think, two hits 
And that's it, unless you, you know, you stun up for some reason. So since you do only two hits, the best thing to do is do like a heavy attack and then like a low kick to put on the ground and then you can do more attacks than just two hits. If you put on the ground you can pick her up and that does like two attacks to her, which just automatically has more damage of course. So when I stunned her, if you guys saw what I did, I basically did a few heavy attacks, I pushed her. I went to her again, did a few heavy attacks, and I pushed her again. Which made it so I think she stunned for longer, I'm not too sure. I'm not sure if that's the best combo to use, but it sure did a lot of damage. This fight is all about timings and reactions honestly if you have bad reaction time you're gonna struggle with this boss and there we go we beat Kuro. So yeah, that was the second hardest boss. I'll show you why in a second, because we're gonna go to Jin Feng. A lot of you guys might think Jin Feng is actually quite hard because of her range and her speed and everything, but there's a few tricks to actually use in order to beat her. Welcome, sir. She's waiting for you. I'm running past these goons, I don't really see a point in fighting them if we're gonna use shortcuts anyway. And now the dungeons. So this is probably my least favorite area, one of my least favorite areas in the game. Like every time that smoke happens, sometimes I lose my enemies and I get hit. Um, this level is actually quite fun, the one I'm in right now, but you'll see soon what I mean. is the flash kick and the bodyguard room is so annoying. Took me so many tries to actually realize how to beat them. So yeah, these enemies are super aggressive, so it's important to just push them and drop kick them whenever possible so you can have less enemies to fight at the same time. Now we go into the ninja girl, she has a flash kick. If you're decent against flash kicks, this should be an easy fight to be honest. You can also push her quite a lot into the walls, which does a lot of structure damage. It's all about timing and dodging appropriately. As you can see, I pushed her into the wall like three times then. That did a lot of structure damage. So yeah, now we go into the worst room in the game in my opinion. In this room, three enemies appear. If you kill one enemy, then another one comes at you. If you kill all three of them, gonna get a new set of free enemies which is I think the way to go so once you kill these three you need to look for the girl with the knife if you kill her first you're gonna only fight two enemies and since she's the uh, easiest to attack and to kill first she should be the first priority I think now you're left with a bodyguard and a flash kick now bodyguard is quite easy to parry but you just need to be careful of the timing. Sometimes he does grab you and he has a few guard break moves. If you get hit by them, you're gonna be screwed, but it's okay. It's important to just fight one of them at a time. If you parry or dodge one of their movesets, then you can just 
push them away or drop them on the ground, then you can fight the other one. Or you can continue fighting that one. But don't try and fight two of them at the same time because at the same time you might need to jump and dodge, which is quite impossible in this game. So yeah, you'll have a bad time if you try to both. Now the staff girl, I'm not sure what I do here, but I think I drop kick her first. These staff people is quite annoying to fire if you don't have a weapon. To each crime, it's punishment. And to if you are using weapons, you can just grab a knife and stab her. Oh yeah, I didn't drop her. <laughs> My bad. See, if I was smarter, I would have just came there and did that low kick and she would have no stuff from the beginning. It probably would have saved me a bit of health. Yeah, I'm on less than half health now. And she wants to get another star. It's no problem if you have low health against Jin Feng, honestly. If you have a bit of patience and you have decent reaction time, you don't even need to have good reaction time. You can actually beat it quite easily. So yeah, we're not using shrines, so we're not going to recover much health now. We're going to be like a third of our health max, I think. Dropping down. Now there's gonna be two ninjas here, they're so easy to kill. We get a little bit of health back here. But it's not enough to recover ourselves fully. Found the target. Yeah, we're like half health now. We're not using shrines. The shrine would recover me to full health, but YOLO. Drop down and we are gonna fight the old disabled lady. Let's go. For whom does the bell toll? You want revenge. And to restore that which once was. So I was getting ready for the fight, so I watched a bit of the cutscene. I used that as recovery time basically. Something wrong? So her combos, basically, the first two attacks are always parryable and then you should dodge the further time. As you can see, she does I think two combos in total. She swings either sideways and then straight and then does a over overhead attack which does a lot of damage if you don't dodge it or she does a low sweep if you get close to her she does a bit of a different combo but as you can see i'm just attack i mean parrying parrying and then dodging the third attack now the thing is if she does the low sweep attack you don't want to go into attacking her because that attack is going to be followed by another attack very soon, especially if you're far, far away. But if she does the overhead attack, she takes a while to attack again. And if you get close to her, she's going to attack super fast, so just be careful. As you can see, parry parry, dodge, she did the overhead. I could have ran into her, but I was too unconfident. I thought I was too far away. And you, as you can see, after the low sweep, she attacked immediately. But after the overhead, she takes a while to attack. You can use that to your advantage. Unless she does the overhead very quickly, then you need to be careful. I could have attacked there, but I had a very high structure bar and I wasn't going to risk it. But there we go. I got ready here. Backed away. Don't attack, on, don't attack after the low sweep, only after the overheads. Uh, 
And right there, I saw that she has high structure and I have low structure, so I just parried until she was done. And now phase 2. Phase 2 is a bit trickier, but it's the same principle. If she does an overhead, you kind of go... If she does an overhead, you can go and attack her. But she has a few other moves, so... At the start of a combo, she can try to go for grabs, and instead of parrying that, you need to dodge. But it has a big visual cue when she's gonna do a grab, so... If you guys are gonna just watch now... Look, she's close for a grab, you can see... She makes a sound effect and a visual cue when she goes for the grab. Right after the low sweep, she goes into attacking mode. And as you can see, there was a few second delay before she went into attack on the overhead. Apart from this time. You need to watch out for those attacks. Yeah, and I didn't dodge in time. To be honest, the whole fight you can just stand from a distance and parry some of the attacks. Of course, not all of them, but that's one way of beating her. But if you do want to get close to her, you can. She's gonna do a few combos. I think she has like three choices. And sometimes she just stops attacking completely and then it starts again, which can mess with the timings of your defense. So, I just play it safe to be honest this round. Stay from a distance, keep parrying. Dodging, jumping. Parry, parry, overhead. Dodge the grab, parry. Jump. And I was getting bit impatient, I wanted to do a bit more damage there, so I went in for a few hits. To be honest, it's not too bad to go in for a few hits, just be careful, she's gonna attack you differently, so you might as well get some distance or get ready for her attacks. As you can see, her timings were super off there, she just starts and stops attacking. Yeah, I'm just slowly getting there to a full structure bar. It's a very boring fight if you play like this, but it's the safest way to kill it, honestly. As you can see, I was impatient there and I was running to her from a very long distance, giving her enough time to attack and I took a lot of damage. So, you know, patience is actually one of the best ways to kill her. If you do make a mistake, she's gonna do a lot of damage to you. And there we go. Jin Feng down. Now the Sanctuary, this is, I don't know, this is quite a difficult level to be honest, but I found out a few techniques of how to make it easier, so if you guys keep watching, maybe I'll save you some time and stuff. Welcome to the sanctuary. So this guy's pretty easy, I'm not sure if I even need to say anything. You can pretty much do any combo against him, just watch out for his attacks, he's a regular grunt. Greetings. We're using a shortcut, of course. So now there's two guys with weapons and a fat guy running to one of them with the weapons. I like to go for the knife guy first, not sure why, I'm just used to, I guess. Now for this guy, you can either push him off or you can just do any combo. Just be careful of the fat guy. That guy, I like to push him off as well, saves a bit of time, but 
his timings are quite slow, so he can get used to that and just duck him and beat him up. Yeah, there we go. We kick him in the face for the finisher. And now, this is very important. Don't go up the stairs fully if you're not using any weapons. You're gonna get a Jin Feng to attack you. You can either parry or dodge, depending on the combo. And be careful of the bodyguard. As you can see there, I was not too careful and I got hit by him. But it's okay, we got rid of him. And we are focusing on Flash Kick first. You need to take them out one by one. So, you need to manipulate their space and their condition. So basically, either drop them down or push them off the stairs. And if you're fighting them one by one, it shouldn't really be a problem in my opinion. Now you can run into this area and just slap this guy to get some health. It does help sometimes, honestly. Especially against Yang and Master Difficulty, he does a lot of chip damage. And the reason I said don't walk up the stairs all the way is because if you do, then this guy with the staff is gonna make his path into the middle and you won't be able to sweep him like I just did there. But if you're using a knife or whatever, you can just stab him and skip this fight completely. rid of him quite easily because without a staff I don't really have a problem fighting these guys. And time for the final boss. So there's a very cool trick I use against Yang. So basically if you dodge his attacks and still parrying he's gonna stop attacking you. And that is very useful for what we're about to do. So, as you can see, I dodge a few attacks, I run in to attack him, and he does these body claw attacks. Like, he aims for your body, and just one second, guys. As you can see, he does two claw attacks, and you can attack him there if you dodge them as well. So, you dodge a few of his moves, he stops attacking. If you attack him first, okay, I messed up with the timings there. If you're both not attacking each other and then you go in to attack him, he does a claw attack and then you can attack him right after dodging them. Best combo to do is two heavies and then drop them down. I'm not sure if it's any better with any skills. Maybe with chasing trip kick you can do some cool stuff or... Honestly, I didn't try anything with any skills. Come on, try it. Dodge his attacks, attack him, dodge his two claw attacks, and then go into your combo. That's the safest way to kill him. Now, sometimes he does do a low sweep, which can catch your butt. It did get me your butt quite a lot, so be careful of them. Fail the dodge there. I'm on very little HP here. Yeah, and he does a sweep attack. I made sure to dodge it. If I would have not dodged, I would have died there and this run would have been over. And as you can see now, I'm literally on 1 HP and managed to get to round 2 against Yang. I could probably do this no hit if. In the given end, enough time and practice. You're still that same child. It's a very simple principle of just dodging and attacking at the right time. Now, similar thing to the first fight. Basically, he does a lot of low sweeps, and if you dodge a few of his attacks, he's gonna do a low sweep all the time, depending on the combo. So, for example. I dodge a few attacks. Okay, that was just his long combo. I dodge a few attacks, he does a low sweep. And I'm just ready for all of them. 
Now I wait for him to attack. Dodge a few attacks. He does a long combo again. Which I was not ready for. But yeah. Two attacks. Low sweep as you can see. It's a bit tricky on the second phase. After a few attacks, he does a low sweep because I'm just dodging. Careful of the running sweep attack as well, it's super fast. Let's see if we can teach you this one. And he does a high kick sometimes as well. Just need to be careful and practice being perfect, of course, or just keep practicing against him if you struggle. Dodge, dodge, jump. Dodge, dodge, jump. As you can see, I do that a lot of times against him. And when I'm not using any skills or shrines or anything, it's not even worth carrying, to be honest. And there we go, we beat the game. So yeah guys, if you enjoyed the video, maybe if you found it useful or educational, then make sure to leave a like and a comment down below. Next week I'm going to be streaming the challenge of beating the game as a 75 year old man on the master difficulty. But I'm not going to use any shrines, I'm not going to use any shortcuts, I'm not going to use any focus. And I'm not going to use any skills and weapons either. So it's going to be similar to this challenge, but much harder and much longer. 